It's Monday, May 6th. The CBI probing the Muzaffar Nagar shelter home sexual abuse case has told the Supreme Court that 11 girls who were living in that home may have been murdered by key accused Brajesh Thakur and his accomplices and that a bundle of bones have been recovered from a burial ground. In its affidavit, the CBI said that on the basis of information provided by one of the accused, a particular spot in a burial ground was excavated from where the bones were recovered. Horrifying details of sexual abuse, torture and exploitation had emerged from the Muzaffar Nagar shelter home last year. The Tata Institute of Social Sciences had found that more than two dozen girls were allegedly raped, drugged and beaten by the management and men who came as visitors. The probe into the case was transferred to the CBI and the agency has charged 21 people, including Thakur. Earlier this year, activist Nivedita Jha had filed a fresh plea in the Supreme Court, alleging that the CBI was trying to shield the real perpetrators. The petitioner had contended that from the perusal of the charge sheet, it is apparent the CBI is trying to shield the real perpetrators and has intentionally avoided to investigate the leads given by the victims about the outsiders and alleged friends of Brajesh Thakur. The petitioner also claimed that the victims in their statement to the CBI have said they were sent to hotels and were also raped by outsiders and friends of Thakur who visited the shelter home. In its affidavit, the CBI has said they have carried out a thorough, fair and impartial probe in the case and denied that the investigation was a hogwash or that the investigation had avoided any crucial lead to shield the perpetrators. The Supreme Court will hear the matter today. The United Nations Agency for Disaster Risk Reduction has praised the accuracy of IMD, India Meteorological Department's early warnings that helped authorities in Urisha evacuate people and minimize the deaths resulting from Cyclone Fani. At least 12 people were killed in Odisha in the storm, which is the most powerful to hit the country in 20 years. The toll was far less than feared as authorities were able to get people to shelter and away from the cyclone's path. Mami Mizutori, UN Special Representative of the Secretary General for Disaster Risk Reduction, tweeted, India's zero-casualty approach to managing extreme weather events is a major contribution to the implementation of the Sendai Framework. Praising the government's preparedness, UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction spokesperson Dennis McLean said that the almost pinpoint accuracy of the early warnings from the India Meteorological Department had enabled authorities to conduct a well-targeted evacuation plan, which had involved moving more than one million people into storm shelters. A record of 1.2 million people were evacuated in 24 hours. 3.2 lakhs from Ganjam and 1.3 lakh people from Puri. Almost 7,000 kitchens catering to 9,000 shelters were made functional overnight. This mammoth exercise involved more than 45,000 volunteers, 3 million targeted messages, 2,000 emergency workers, youth clubs, and other civil society organizations Voting in 51 constituencies across seven states Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Jharkhand and Jammu and Kashmir is presently underway in Phase 5. Key constituencies include Rai Bareilly from where Sonia Gandhi is contesting and Ameti where Rahul Gandhi and Smriti Rani face off. The militancy hit Anantnag parliamentary seat in South Kashmir is in an unprecedented move, voting in three phases including today, 48 hours before polling was to get underway, BJP leader Gul Mohammad Mir, vice president of the party's Anantnag unit, was shot dead by unidentified militants. Political leaders in the valley have condemned the BJP leader's killing. The BJP, citing a media report, has alleged that Congress President Rahul Gandhi had links with a defence firm, Ulrich McKnight, that got an offset contract when the UPA was in power. According to the report, McKnight was a 35% co-owner in Gandhi's Britain-based firm Backops Limited. Gandhi reportedly owned a majority 65% equity in the company between 2003 and 2009 before it was dissolved. Subsidiaries associated with McKnight received defence contracts as an offset partner of the French firm Naval Group, 
when it signed a deal with the Indian government for Scorpion submarines, the news website claimed. If I put it in one sentence, it's a story of a man who aspired to be a defense deal pusher and today aspires to be the Prime Minister of India. Please take any investigation you want. Please take any action you want against me. I have no problem. I've done absolutely nothing wrong. Now, please also investigate Rafael. Sri Lankan Army Chief Lieutenant General Sena Naike has said that some of the suicide bombers who carried out the Easter Sunday bombings had visited Kashmir and Kerala for, quote, some sort of training or to make some more links with other foreign outfits. India, remember, had shared intelligence inputs with Sri Lanka prior to the attacks on the three churches and three high-end hotels that killed 253 people. Speaking to the BBC, Lieutenant General Mahesh Sena Naike disclosed some details on the movement of the suspects in the region and also international links, saying they've gone to India, they've gone to Kashmir, Bangalore, they've travelled to Kerala. That's the information available with us. As to why the security establishment did not act following information received from India, the Sri Lankan army chief said, we had some information and intelligence sharing situations and military intelligence on a different direction and the others were different. There was a gap that everybody could see today. He said as the chief of army, he believed that everybody who's responsible for intelligence gathering and national security is to be blamed, including the political hierarchy. Love your morning fix? Help support our journalism. Subscribe to Scroll Plus using the link in the description.